Hello, and thank you for listening to today's episode of JAT Cast, the official podcast of the Journal of Athletic Training. I'm your host, Luke Donovan. This month, we will discuss two articles over two short episodes from the upcoming issue of the Journal of Athletic Training. In the first episode, I will talk about lower limb asymmetry in adolescent athletes following ACL reconstruction. In the second episode, I will explore aspects of technology that influence athletic trainers' patient care documentation strategies in secondary schools. As a reminder, the article discussed today can be found on the JAT website, natajournals.org. And please remember that all content from JAT is open access to all readers thanks to the funding from the National Athletic Trainers Association. The title of the first article is Lower Limb Asymmetry After Anterior Cruciate Ligament Reconstruction in Adolescent Athletes, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analyses authored by Dr. Gerwin Hughes and colleagues from the University of San Francisco and the University of Zurich. Let's survey the scene. ACL injuries are common among adolescent sport participants. Nearly three quarters of tears to the ACL occur without a direct blow to the knee, but rather during non-contact events such as landing or cutting. Upwards of 90% of individuals who sustain an ACL rupture elect to have the ligament surgically reconstructed. Following the surgical intervention, extensive rehabilitation is completed with the goal of returning the surgical limb back to original levels of function across common clinical measures such as range of motion, strength, and coordination. However, many times pre-injury measures of function are not available making the function of the non-surgical limb the target goal across measures. Unfortunately, despite surgical efforts and extensive rehabilitation, as high as 29% of patients who undergo ACL reconstruction either re-tear the graft of the surgical limb or sustain an injury of the ACL to the contralateral limb. Most of the secondary ACL injuries occur during sport participation. The high prevalence of second ACL injuries are thought to be related to the strength of the thigh muscles and altered biomechanics during athletic tasks such as landing and cutting. As such, many researchers have sought to develop clinical assessment criteria to determine an appropriate time for a patient to return to sport. Some common measures include time since surgery, knee joint stability, symmetry between surgical and non-surgical limbs in measures of strength, power, endurance, and hop distance, and qualitative movement analysis during sporting tasks. Although the assessment criteria provides a broad assessment of knee function, mechanical symmetry of measures of kinetics are omitted. The omission may be clinically relevant and cause premature return to sport as evident by a recent systematic review and meta-analyses which found that adults who underwent ACL reconstruction had a reduced knee extension moment and reduced ground reaction force on the surgical limb when compared to the non-surgical limb during landing tasks. It is hypothesized that adolescents would also demonstrate mechanical asymmetries after ACL reconstruction. In fact, considering the rapid change to structure and function of motor control that occurs during adolescence, the asymmetries in kinetics may be even more pronounced. As such, developing consensus as to what the biomechanic profile most often resembles in adolescence following ACL reconstruction is a critical step to continue to refine and build upon established return to sport guidelines. Therefore, the purpose of the systematic review and meta-analysis was to identify reported common biomechanic asymmetries during landing and time frames in which asymmetries persist post-ACL reconstruction among adolescents. The authors search various electronic databases with no time constraints as to when the studies have been published. The following search terms were used within each database, asymmetry or symmetry, and landing, and biomechanics, or kinematics or kinetics. Articles not written in English, review papers, meta-analyses, and non-peer-reviewed papers were immediately excluded. Two independent reviewers assessed the remaining articles to determine whether the following inclusion criteria was met. The participants within each study had to be human adolescents who had ACL reconstruction and performed a landing maneuver being either single limb or double limb and reported at least one kinetic or kinematic measure of asymmetry between the surgical and non-surgical limbs. Example kinetic variables were ground reaction force, joint moments, and energy absorption. Kinematic variables included joint angles and angular velocities. The process resulted in 13 papers to be included.
A quality assessment of each study was completed. Means, standard deviations, and effect sizes of the primary variables of interest were extracted or calculated using the available data when necessary. Here are the results. Five studies were scored as high quality, seven as moderate quality, and one as low quality. Across the 13 studies, a total of 180 males and 330 females with a mean age of 16.4 participated. Most studies reported testing at either 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, and 12 months after their surgery or a combination of those same time points. Some studies used post-return to sport as the time frame or did not report a definitive time. Specific to the primary variables of interest, sagittal plane kinetics and vertical ground reaction force during double limb landing tasks were the most frequently included variables and shown to be asymmetric between limbs. Specific to the meta-analysis, ACL reconstruction had a large effect on decreasing symmetry between limbs and peak vertical ground reaction force, peak knee extension moment, mean knee extension moment, knee energy absorption, and loading during double limb landing. In all cases of differences in the previous measures, the surgical limb value was lower when compared to the non-surgical limb. These findings were predominantly during double limb landing tasks, which may be attributed to the overall larger sample size or from the nature of the task. During double limb landing, individuals have an opportunity to utilize their contralateral limb to protect the surgical limb. As such, it appears that participants adopted an avoidance strategy by offloading the surgical limb and increasing the load on the non-surgical limb. Similar findings were observed in the aforementioned systematic review and meta-analysis of adult participants. Aside from the kinetic variables, the authors found that asymmetries in kinetic variables were not as commonly identified and pronounced as the sagittal plane kinetic variables. The authors did find moderate effects in peak knee flexion angle during both double and single limb tasks and peak ankle dorsiflexion angle during double limb landing. From a time since surgery perspective, asymmetries were more commonly noted in participants who underwent surgery closer to the time of testing. However, the three studies that included post-surgical time points at either 8 or 12 months still reported kinetic asymmetries demonstrating that mechanical asymmetries are often present one year following surgery. The large effect that ACL reconstruction has on asymmetry of vertical ground reaction force in various measures of sagittal plane kinetics further supports the inclusion of mechanical asymmetry assessment as part of the return to play criteria and further supports efforts to improve mechanical symmetry throughout the rehabilitation process. Inclusion of these measures may reduce the occurrence of premature return to sport. Future research continued to explore and evaluate the validity of low-cost instruments with clinical utility for assessing mechanical symmetry during double limb landing tasks. Well, that's it for today's JET cast. Please remember to rate and subscribe to the podcast, which is available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and Stitcher. You can find out more information about upcoming podcasts and other JAT events on our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts at JAT underscore NATA. Thank you for listening and keep a lookout for next JAT cast episode. Mm-hmm.